6.30 in the morning and we are about to leave. We had um, two cups of coffee, one each, and the kind gentleman here um, gave us a thermos for us to put them in. So it was, it was a little bit warm still, which is unusual. We didn't have cold coffee. We had mildly warm coffee. Uh, really, really nice people uh, there. Well, it's an alberga and a um, hotel rural. So I've been sitting by the window. One thing I don't understand is why rooms sometimes have a lovely window like this, but no seat in it. So we've done a little bit of furniture removal, removal, moving, furniture moving, um, and moved a bench over to the window. I've been sitting here with coffee and Neapolitanas and looking out at the gradually lightening day. So we're about to leave. <laughs> Something that I'm sort of hoping to improve a little that keeps happening is that we're ready to go. It was like just after half six when I was talking to you. I had a couple of things left to do, like fill up my water bottles and put electrolyte tablets in. And then somehow it's now just gone 10 past seven and we've just left the alberg. <laughs> so we're on the way. There's no great rush, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, yeah, but here we are heading to Fromester today. Um, and it's about 15.4 uh, miles thereabouts. I forget what that is in kilometers, but I'll no doubt update you later. There aren't too many stops. There's, I think we've got about eight kilometers before we get to the first one. And then there are two more after that, one at about 10 kilometers and one at about 11. They're all close together. And then there's nothing until we get to 19 kilometers. So it's actually, it's 25 kilometers in total. So promised to comes back to me now. <laughs> so that's today. First of all, we've got a climb. We get out of Castel Jerez and then there's a big climb up onto um, a viewpoint from which we should see a long way out across the Meseta, probably a bit the way we did from the castle, I think. But it is the land that we'll be walking over. This place is called La Casa del Silencio. And at the top it says love and shh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuero bar and restaurant. Food shop, Alimentacion Nieves, snooze. <laughs> so somehow, this is the Plaza Mayor, and somehow yesterday we managed to not find it, not see it at all. <laughs> I imagine that, well there's obviously a restaurant there, and I'd read that one of the things to do here was to sit out at the restaurant in the main square and people sit around drinking wine and whatever and we just sort of presumed one of the squares back there must have been the one by El Fuero. I think because when we came down from the castle we were a bit low on time in order to get back and have a bit of a rest and have showers and so on so we kind of did a bit of a loop around it wasn't too important to find this but it's nice to see it now. <laughs> I have developed um, a clanking on my backpack and I couldn't work out what it was. I don't know whether you can hear it, the bang, 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 bang. And it is the carabiner that I always have on my backpack. Just today it's decided to make a noise every time I take a step. I haven't changed anything. <laughs> it's one of those days. I told Andrew and his response was, you're like a curious little elf or a sprite. So I don't know what I think about that because I'm a serious person. Well, I had a brainwave. I uh, stopped and I reconfigured my backpack. I tried to get just the middle part I normally have it so I have the things I want least but also that are sort of quite padded um, underneath at the bottom and then I have it so that the lumbar section comes out a bit because I find that the most comfortable um, so I took it off and I rearranged that and I pushed out the lumbar area more put the backpack on it was still banging so then I had a brainwave and I took the carabiner off so now it's here. I don't know why I've had to do this because it's been there for years. <laughs> but today 
bang, bang, bang with every step. <laughs> this is for sale. It says on it, se vende. It's got a good view up to the castle behind it there. Look. Well, there's another one that's for sale. <laughs> and the drinking fountain on the way out of the town. And a nice trough there as well. Mm. If you ever hear a strange zipping sound in these videos, it's because Andrew is on zipping his hip pack as well to take photographs. It's a new Cotopaxi hip pack that he's got. And it's got a very loud zip on it. Every so often I stop filming and we hear <laughs> zip. <laughs> and that's what it is. So. There's a line. So that wiggly route there is leading us to the mountain pass of Mostaleras and it's 142 meters of climb and it's over two kilometers. Andrew's got a new plant identification app so he's going to be stopping and photographing plants much more because normally we walk past them and we both go, what's that? And we don't know, and we take a photo and we try to look it up later. <laughs> and we know some, you know, poppies. I know there was one yesterday that we used this app for when we were trying it out, because I had a photograph, and that was pheasant's eye. It's a small type of poppy. It does actually look like a pheasant's eye too, I thought it was a very good name for it. <laughs> This board. So we're leaving Castro Jerez and going toward Itero del Castillo today. And the sign is telling us there are trout in these streams. This one's a bit of a climb. <laughs> it's a steady climb though. It's not bad. I was talking to a gentleman on the way up, the man with a camera, his name's Cesar Burjeres and he's a writer and photographer. He's about to publish a book of photographs of the Camino and he has a novel due out in the next year called The Architect of Jazz. El Arquitecturo de Jazz.
we're thinking that this is pretty much the view on the cover of the Briarley guidebook currently. If I zoom in a bit on that gentleman, he would be roughly where the man on the cover is. Well, there was a little coffee stop just where those trees are around there and quite a few people have stopped there but we're quite keen to get a little bit more ground covered and there are a couple of villages by the look coming up soon looking at the map It looks so soft, I almost want to just jump into it. I imagine it would be like jumping into the most comfortable bed in the world and it really wouldn't, would it? <laughs> it would be a ridiculously hard landing. San Nicolás de Puentetero. I have an idea that this is the place that washes people's feet. I might be wrong, but it rings a bell. They've got cushions here for people to lie on. So we went into the monastery of um, San Nicolas, which is also an albergue and hostel. Um, and it is the place where they used to do the feast washing. They don't do it anymore. And the gentleman said, yes, it is that place, but he was quite reluctant to say what happened and why they've stopped doing it. They're not doing it anymore. Um, and I didn't want to push that, but they were really, it was really nice. They um, offered coffee. So I had a little cup of very nice coffee and it's a nice tranquil place but don't expect to have your feet washed. I didn't actually want to have my feet washed, I was just curious about the tradition of it and the history of it. And just down the road from, or down the way I should say, from the monastery of San Nicolas is this lovely bridge, it's the Ponte Fitero. And it's worth coming off the Camino just a short way so that you can see the bridge properly because actually the way leads straight over it. <laughs> It's actually called the Puente de Etero del Castillo. Um, it dates from the time of Alfonso the Sixth, 1072 to 1109. I think if you like wildlife, and in particular birds, you could do a lot worse than to stay at that monastery because it's right by this and there are a lot of you can hear all sorts of bird songs here we're entering into Palencia province of 
Palencia. There's a good map here. So we're starting down toward the bottom, heading to Fromista. And then we'll go to Carrion de los Condes. And then we're after Sagun, we're taking the dotted route, um, going to Casadilla de los Hermenios. And then we're going to Mancia de las Mulas, and from there on to Leon. And then I shall explain the rest of it after Leon at a later point. <laughs> but that's our section of Meseta. Entering into Itero de la Vega. They're advertising food, albergues, Nitero's bunk beds, <laughs> breakfast. That's the albergue Itero. There's Oguan del Peregrino, Peregrino House. They've got individual rooms. Habitacion is dobles, so single bedrooms and double bedrooms. I'm hoping you'll be able to see there's a baby stork in that nest. There's the adult which is standing up and next to it there's a little baby. A storklet. I don't know the name for fledgling. It's not quite a fledgling though I don't think. And there's another stork lower down on the roof below it. Oh there are two nests! There's a nest on the roof below as well, I think. I need the monocular to look at it again. <laughs> so there is definitely a nest lower down as well. We're trying to find a cafe um, and there was a sign for one in this direction. So maybe uh, we'll be able to get a good view of the storks. Oh, there's a stork right up there actually watching us, probably keeping an eye on us, making sure we don't do anything too hazardous to it. It is also a really lovely village. Right, well, we're thinking we'll go in here, La Mochila. It doesn't look very open, but obviously because the signs are out and so on, it says that there is a garden at the back. <laughs> so the place where we stopped is a little supermarket. And for a sandwich, you just choose what you want from the deli and they made it up. We've got two coffees. And I've got a local specialty, which is, I believe, a tuna sort of bread thing. And we've got nectarines for later on. It's really nice here. I'll show you a little of the surroundings as well. There's an albergue here. And then to go back onto the Camino, we'll go down here and then go right. Well, we're leaving Itero de la Vega. Vega meaning meadow. Well, it's bright now. So, <laughs> I've got the cap and I've also Got the sunglasses out 
Partly because the, the way ahead, the path, is really light coloured um, stones. So I've been screwing my face up and decided that's it, the sunglasses are coming out. The downside to them is because they're polarising sunglasses, when I try to look at my phone to check the route or for anything else, or even to take photos, I can't see the screen too clearly because it turns it into a sort of rainbow effect. Um, yeah. But it's much more pleasant in general having these on. <laughs> he's crazy, he's crazy. When he's back, I already told you, eh? when he takes the shower, he can just close the door, eh? he's there, watch the kiss. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, not when it's mixed, but when it's man only, then he comes out to shower and. Uh, <laughs> there is one. It's the picture of this app. He's collecting photos of flowers still. That lady ahead is wearing a parka, long trousers. She's got a big backpack, which is sort of not really with a hip belt and a hat. Compare that with... Here we are. <laughs> the fleeces have come off. It's too, there's a breeze, but it's, it's too hot. I don't know how she's walking like that. <laughs> See, I do understand the need to cover up from the sun, that makes sense, a sun shirt or whatever. But thick layers? Mm. So today I think we're having some <laughs> thoughts about time. It's one of the things about the Camino that at different points thoughts go through your mind, obviously because you're walking a long way. And because I'm walking with Andrew a lot of the time we're talking, but some of the time we're on our own. And I think today in particular something that maybe has been in the background quite a lot is coming out that we're sort of needing to shrug off the idea that you have to do things, you have to get somewhere. Um, which is difficult because obviously we do have to get somewhere and we want to do it with enough time to relax and maybe see the place a bit. Um, and we're both sort of, we're in agreement about it, we're not um, disagreeing with one another, we're just sort of acknowledging the fact that it's going on and actually at times we find ourselves talking to other people and they walk at different paces and you start talking and then it's really interesting and you want to stay and talk to them but it can be difficult if your natural pace is a different one and then you find yourself thinking that you want to go a bit quicker to try and <laughs> and then you talk to someone else and then you start thinking well how long should I spend over coffee <laughs> um, and I think we're both just wanting to somehow get rid of that and and yet still have time when we get there to really rest. One of the things we've noticed compared with last time is we seem to have time to just shower, read for a bit, write if we wanted, as well as doing other things. And this time, I've felt okay with that, really. I maybe haven't felt fully that I'm here yet in a weird way. Um, I'm having to sort of stop and think, hang on, I guess, what was that? Where were we then? Um, so yeah. That seems to be a bit of a theme for the day, and maybe it's particularly because we got out a little later than we'd intended. We're coming up on Boadija del Camino. 
but it's actually still quite a way off. We're quite surprised to see it though because after that, that's at 19 kilometers today and after that Fromester isn't far really. Now the problem is we walk quickly, we pass people but then we stop. <laughs> it's either because we're looking at birds or taking photos or now Andrew's identifying plants in his app. But that's all part of it, isn't it? Well, that's my first sight of Fromister. It's way off in the distance at the moment. There's Andrew whizzing past me. <laughs> in distant mountains. So they're actually mowing down the poppies because they are a crop. And I don't actually know what they do with them. After they've mown them down, they leave them lying like this. I guess it gets dried out and then, I don't know. Or maybe it's just because it puts nutrients into the soil in some way, but I doubt that. I don't know. black kite just going overhead. For a little while there's no one ahead except for Andrew. In a little while. <laughs> So we're entering Boadija and there's an albergue there. Albergue Putsu. A lot of people waiting outside. So we passed a sign back there saying, I think it said Juntos, best pancakes on the Camino. So I imagine if you're staying here, you're in for a treat. So we're here at just gone quarter to one. You wouldn't want to be here at this time in hotter weather. And this is pretty hot now actually. The wind's died down a little. We've got some way to go yet. 5.8 kilometers, I think, to get into Fromista. There are five nests. There's one high up, two on either side, and then on the lower roofs, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a sixth. Just below that street lamp on the right, there's another one. Can't see chicks. Stalklets. <laughs> I think that stork's nest at the very top is pretty impressive. It seems to be raised up on something. I don't know. It's a nice village. I think there's quite a lot to see here if you're staying. It looks as though the albergue Juntos is popular, although it is the place that does the finest pancakes in the world, so <laughs> <laughs> sleep, eat, drink, enjoy, relax. Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't know if you can see, but that stork's nest, you can, from this angle, it looks almost like a large bucket just sticking off from the roof, but suspended in the air. I think it's been built around a sort of chimney or something. I think the person up ahead blends in with the poppies rather well. He or she is like a walking poppy. <laughs> what do you think we're about to see? <laughs> It's the canal. We're going to follow this for some way, apparently. You can do the Camino on a boat. <laughs> Maybe not all of it. Five euros. Wednesday to Monday. I was reading a little about the construction of this in the, um, mostly in the 19th century. Um, and that initially it was a sort of dream to be able to link this hinterland with the coast. Um, linking up the plains with the sea. And of course, it was really important during the Industrial Revolution that those links were in place. It enabled a lot more movement prior to roads, and to some extent prior to railways as well, but that's going back a little earlier too. It's almost as though the shape of the bulrushes, well, the shape of the bulrushes does echo the shape of the trees, poplars. And everything's bending. I guess it's westward. <laughs> the way we're going. Beautiful as this has been today. I think we're both possibly feeling it a little bit now. Um, not in any particular way, just a little bit foot sore. It'll be nice to get in and just read for a bit <laughs> and have a shower. It's felt quite a long day, I think, ultimately, this last section. Don't know about you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, this, this part by the canal, I'm surprised there aren't more birds on the canal. That's one thing, that by the canals, certainly there's a canal near where we live in the UK, um, and there are a lot of moorhens and ducks and swans, uh, other birds you occasionally see as well. I have seen water rail, for example, further up, further to the north. Um, I haven't seen any birds on the canal, but lots in the trees around. <laughs> So, but I think we're coming into Fromister now. There's a dairy farm there. Lots of cattle out. And the smell from them just here is quite powerful, but strangely it seems to mingle in with the smell of the earth that I think I've grown quite accustomed to, which has that, I often say it's like tannins. Um, leathery, obviously, mixed with soil, but a slight sweetness mixed with cow pats right now. So there we go, future memory of entering Fromister. And there's a cuckoo as well, quite nearby. It 
It can be easy to reach a point at which when you see a church and you're nearly at your destination, you presume that that's basically the outskirts of the destination. Sometimes, no, you've got another half a kilometer yet. Lots of seeds in the air again. I'm coming through a lock here. Look at the seeds like snow. Hmm. So Rome is that way, to the right, <laughs> Santiago is left, Jerusalem is even more to the right. <laughs> Gentleman with the red backpack on the left, that is from Italy, and he just came up and offered to take a photo of us. <laughs> I think he's the first Italian person I've spoken to on the Camino this time. So we've just come up from the canal where that gentleman's walking. And this is looking the other way into the town. Uh, obviously it's Fromista. There's a sort of plant of some sort over there. Quite often the way when you're coming into slightly larger towns. They don't look too historical at first. And I can already see a church tower with some stork's nests on the top of it, so that will be a delay. <laughs> We are now in Fromista and our accommodation is over that way but we've stopped off for ice creams <laughs> and we went to the bank and for some reason it's not accepting Andrew's card it says we went through the whole process it was contactless it was fine but then it said invalid card and we tried two different banks so we're now we've got cash we used my card and it liked my card it's just Andrew it had a problem with and we've gone into this place here cafe bar they don't have much food at the moment, but they do have ice cream, so got that and some drinks. Oh, lost my hat. <laughs> Bread and more panny mess. <laughs> well, this is where we're staying the Hotel San Pedro, Hotel Rural. There's a very nice square there. So this is our room at the Hotel San Pedro and it's one of the 
larger rooms, I think. But the nice thing about it is we have this area right here. Hmm. It's nice. It's really nice. And the lady downstairs has been really helpful. She says there's a cafe that's open at about half six in the morning, so we might be able to go there to get coffee. That thing. That thing when a scabbard beetle flies into your room and you don't really know how to get it out, except hope. Open. <laughs> So sitting here on our little terrace, I have noticed that if I zoom in on the tower, I don't know whether you'll see it very well, but in that tower on the right, there's no adult bird, but there are some chicks. And every so often they stick their heads up just slightly. You might see a little white bump sticking up. So we've just been into the pharmacy because of my hip being very red and having problems where I put the compede on and we went from one plaster to cover it to another adhesive plaster to another adhesive plaster and none of them were quite big enough or they were big but they weren't waterproof or there were various issues so I've got some cream now and more um, adhesive plasters to cover it and they've suggested I try to take the compede off um, and I've also got some hand cream because I've got dry hands so it's really really helpful back and forth back and forth until they got just the right thing we kept looking at the size no bigger bigger and then with the hand, hand um, cream I want it smaller small <laughs> so we got there now so we couldn't find anywhere to eat in Fromister and a local recommended this place where they do pizzas it's called Garigolo I've got the carbonara and we're going to share both actually that one's a vegetable one but they look really well made they're homemade I think look at that base yes it's nice <laughs> <laughs> 